Okay, today we're going to take a look and examine what is known as a mass spectrometer. The idea of this is simply to figure out uh, what exactly is the mass of a particle. Now, the process of doing that is actually in three steps, and uh, you see them up here. We're going to have a particle that's going to go through what's known as an accelerator, then through something else that's known as a velocity selector, and lastly, we have to put it through yet again another, let's say, another room or another space that we call the mass separator. So there's a few steps to this thing. So we're going to go right from the beginning and go through it because each one requires a little bit of math and a little bit of understanding of how magnetic fields and electric fields are going to interact with a particle. So let's just start right off at the beginning. And so what, what we have here is the accelerator. And the accelerator is nothing more than a voltage source. So we've got the, let's just say we've got the voltage up here, right here. And as, as you know, what that's going to do is it's going to create a, uh, an abundance of positive charges on one side. Because what I have here is a voltage source where we're basically attaching it to a very large capacitor, uh, two large metal plates. And just as you have been uh, seeing all the way since electrostatics, uh, if I build up charge on one side and I build up the opposite charge on the other side, what's going to happen is that I am going to create an electric field. And we all know that the electric field is going to go across. It's going to be uniform and it is going to be pushing in a straight line. There's going to be a force created uh, from one side to the other. So any kind of positive charge is, uh, over here is going to get moved. Now let's just, for the moment, uh, consider a charge. Let's just put one here. Now this is a mystery charge. We don't know what it is, but we do know it's positively charged because we're going to have it reacting to the electric field that I've created between these two plates. So it's going to get pushed, or rather accelerated, because by being pushed, it's experiencing a force, and it's going to go straight across. Now, you'll notice that I've got a little, right there, got a little hole. And the reason for this is that I'm going to be accelerating the particle really fast, and it just so happens if I get a few particles coming in a straight line right at this plate, it will, a few of them, most of them are going to hit the plate on either side, but there will be a few that will end up going right through that little hole and into my velocity selector. Now, as soon as we start this, though, let's, let's just consider what's going on here, okay? So what I'm doing is I'm increasing my voltage as much as I can until the air in between becomes... Uh, conductive and the particles will fly across that space to the other side. Uh, I have a little small opening so the particle will go through that. Now what kind of speed am I going to get? Well I can actually uh, kind of consider uh, what that's going to be because we actually know some of the equations necessary. We know that the uh, change in, in, in voltage, now this is the change in voltage from one side to the next is going to require some work done and uh, we also know that the change of voltage would be equal to the work over Q. We learned this we learned this in electrostatics and so what's going to happen is that I know that the work done will be equal therefore into the delta V times Q. This is work. This is energy. And so what I have is from the particle starting from here to here, you may remember that this is actually potential energy. It's potential energy. And that potential energy as it moves across is going to be getting reduced down to zero because it's based upon the distance away from this plate. So as soon as it reaches this point, that potential energy is now zero, but it hasn't gone away. The potential energy now has become, you guessed it, it's become kinetic energy. It's moving really fast at this point. So my delta V Q, in other words, the voltage of my battery times the charge of my particle, is going to end up equaling the kinetic energy 
of that particle. That's one half mv squared. So I have a neat little way of understanding uh, what kind of speed I'm going to get. I can play around with this. Now there's a problem is because I, like I said, this is a mass spectrometer. I don't know. I have no idea what the mass is. So right now I know I'm going a certain speed, but I need, um, the problem is, is that my particle could have started from here. It could have started from here, any sort of distance, which means these particles could have not gone the full distance. In other words, the work done might have been slightly off. It did not necessarily have to be moving from the plate over here. It could have just been in the middle of this space and got rushed down. So this velocity could be any number of velocities. And I want to make sure I get the right one. And I'm going to explain why in a second. So the first thing is just really all we're trying to do is speed up that particle. So we're creating a force by a, a a voltage difference between two plates we speed it up and now we have this this particle that's moving very fast in fact we have many particles that are coming through here in fact there's you know at this point probably millions of particles moving and streaming through into my what i call my velocity selector so let's just move on to the velocity selector take a look at what happens there so What's going to happen in this case is that my particle is going to move into this box. Now, two things are happening inside a velocity selector. There's actually two different fields taking place here. The first one is that I do actually have uh, another electrical field, and I could be creating this in the same way I do with the accelerator. Um, it will be pointed in a different direction. So I'm just going to draw the lines of that. I'm not going to show how I made it, but I am going to just show what the lines look like. So I'm going to have a, a electric field, a uniform electric field. And in this case, we're showing it as pointing in the downward direction. But I'm not just going to have that. So this is, a, this is an E field. Now what I'm going to do next, though, is that at the same time that's happening, the same time that's happening, I'm also going to put pointing into the paper. In other words, uh, I guess you could picture it's going into your screen. I have a magnetic field. I got a magnetic field. And so what I have is a force that is being created by the electric field. And the electric field is going to try to uh, change the direction, change the path of that particle. But the, but the magnetic field is also going to try to push it. Now you have to think about this for a moment now. Let's, let's just think about this. What exactly um, is the combination of forces here and which way are they pushing? Well, it's easy to tell the direction that the electric field is pointing. So now, hold on, I should draw this. This is a B field. I gotta, I gotta, magnetic field pointing in and electric field pointing down. Now, if you think about it, what's going to happen to my particle? Let's just take a look at my little particle. My little particle, we'll just call this little particle P, is going to experience a, a push from the electric field pointing down, which should make, should make uh, my particle uh, move, kind of get bent down like this. The path should go like that. But lo and behold, what else I have is I have um, the magnetic field. And if you use your right hand rule, remember, we got to think about how we use the right hand rule. Uh, the thumb is the direction of your uh, velocity, uh, your pointing in the direction of your magnetic field. And right now, you could probably just do that right now. Just take your thumb, push it in the direction that your particle was going at the very beginning when it came in. And then you look and you realize that, wait a minute, the force from the B field is going to push up here. I'm going to have um, the B pointing up this way. So there's going to be kind of a tug of war between the two forces. In fact, what I'm wanting to do is get it so that it goes in a straight line. So I've got some particles that are going to do this, some particles that are going to fly off some particles that are going to actually move downwards, and then some particles that are going to go straight through. Now the question is, is how do I know which ones are going straight? That's kind of an interesting thing here. So I've got the force from the E field, 
what does that actually equal to? Let's think about that for a second. Well, um, let's just write it over here. The force from the electric field, just got to go back and remember what we said in electrostatics. That's equal to the charge of the particle times the electric field. But at the same time, I also have the force of the magnetic field. Now, that's something we learned a little more recently. But you may remember that is Q times the velocity times the B field. In other words, the magnetic field. So if I want these two forces to cancel out, in other words, they will push with equal amounts, thus keeping that particle in a straight line, I would have to have uh, both of these equal to each other. So I would have to have, so let's just write this over here. So for a, for a straight line, straight line, uh, force net has to equal zero, which means uh, QE plus QVB must equal zero. But another way of saying that would be that QE must equal QV. B. Now let's take a look at that. If I'm putting in this electric field or this magnetic field, I should know what values, how strong I'm making my electric field. I can control that. I can control how strong my magnetic field is. So if it's moving in a straight line, any particle that's moving in a straight line has a very specific velocity because if this velocity is different, they're not going to equal each other. So the velocity I need in order to make them equal, because let's do a little math, my my Q's cancel out, and I'm going to be left with E over B. So I have this number. If I know what my electric field is, and I know what my B field is, any particle that moves through here now has a velocity that must be, must be equal to my electric field divided by my magnetic field strength. These two things must be equal to each other. They're balanced, though there's no turning. So this is why we're calling this a velocity selector because I have because I know what's coming through here has to have this velocity I have selected a very specific velocity I know how fast these particles must be going because if you think about it if I'm moving a little bit too fast if I move a little too fast that means my magnetic field will be slightly bigger slightly bigger than the force given by my electric field and the the particle is going to move up here it's going to get turned up it's going to be a little bit it'll look more like a little strong b field and a weak e field because the v here will make this side bigger but if i'm moving slower so let's just say this this path faster it's going too fast but if it's going this way, then actually it's because the right side is now smaller than the e, uh, the uh, left side. And so if it's slower, the electric field uh, force will actually take over and it will bend downwards. So in other words, unless I have a velocity exactly equal to the electric field divided by the, the magnetic field, um, it is not going to go through this hole that is directly opposite the, the one it came in. So this makes sure that I know exactly what the velocity is of the particle I've got. Okay, so just take a moment and think about that for a while, and then we're going to move on to the next thing. Because now we've got a particle, and it's going to come into this last section. And this is the mass separator. Because, remember, what am I trying to do here? I am trying to find out exactly what the mass of this particle is. So this thing is moving in and it has a velocity and I know the velocity is equal to the electric field over the B field of the velocity selector. So this is how I got that. And it's going to move into this new room. Okay, and this new room, the mass separator actually has only one field in it. It has, it has a uniform magnetic field and it is pointing out in this case. It doesn't have to. For this uh, diagram that we're doing here, we have 
uh, the field pointing out, you could point in, it would be okay. But it does have to be pointing uh, sort of in this perpendicular to the surface. Now what's going to happen? Let's think about it. The B field is the only thing producing a force. It's the only force here. There's no other electric field. There's nothing else. And so what we do know is that the, the force that's going to come, the, the, the force from the magnetic field, is going to be equal to QV. B and and you might remember it's QV. I should be saying QV cross B because it is going to be perpendicular to both the velocity and to the magnetic field. So once again, use your use your right hand rule, and you will remember that. Wait a minute, it's going to turn. I'm going to get a force. The force. Uh, uh, the force. Sorry. Um. Actually, I shouldn't. I shouldn't draw it there. Should I? Let me see. The force that I'm going to get there is going to be pointing down. I'm going to get a force. And so my path of my little guy is going to say it's going to turn. It's going to turn. But now I'm still going to get a force. I'm still in the magnetic field. So now it's going to be pushing at 90 degrees. Remember, this is always 90 degrees. So it's going to, it's going to keep rotating. It's always going to be, there's always going to be a force pushing. 90 degrees from the direction of my velocity and I keep changing the direction of my velocity so I keep changing which way the force is pushing all right I'm basically making this is going to be a circular path it's a circular path so what does this tell me well this means this is what Think about what we've done before. This is a centripetal force. Centripetal force. Now, there's one other thing that a mass separator has, and that's right along here. This whole wall here is going to be called, we're going to call this the detector wall. Detector wall or surface detector wall is good enough. And it is able to let a uh, an experimenter know um, if this if this comes around. Let's see, this this particle comes around in an exact half circle. Notice it's going to be half a circle because immediately as soon as it comes in, it's going to start turning, and it's going to have the same force the whole time, which means it's going to give this perfect circle and then go splat. And I can see, I can see, I can. Here's my little eye. I'm looking. I go, ooh, look, look, look at that. I can see where it hit the wall. Now let's think about that. Let's think about that for a moment. I know where it hit. So I know here's where, here's where it hit there. And it went in here. So let's just draw this again. It went like that. And I know this and this. And I can measure this distance. This is a distance. But this is also equal to 2 times the radius of this circle. Because this, this is a, right here is a nice little, well, if I had to keep drawing it, it's, a, it's half of a circle. So this distance between the entrance of the particle and the, and the location of where it hits the wall when it co comes around and hits is actually equal to 2 times the radius of that circular path it made. So let's just think about this here. I'm going to draw this all over here. The, the, the magnetic force is also a centripetal force. Let's, let's bring all those things in. So magnetic uh, force is QVB, just like we've always been saying. And I know the strength of my magnetic field. And I know the charge I'm using. I know the charge I have here. So what do I got? It's going to be equal to, well, what's centripetal force? mass times centripetal acceleration and that's equal to mass times v squared over r so let's take a look at that look what we got here i know the charge i know how much charge there is because i know how much um, i have coming across with my accelerator i know how to figure it out and then what else do i have well I also know the R because I, I can measure it. I can measure it on the detector wall. So let's, uh, let's move that over to the other side. Okay, R. Do I know the V? Yeah, of course I know the V. I, I worked it out. It's E over B, isn't it? 
Okay, all right, excellent. And then what do I got? Um, well, I know the B, I should put that in there. And, oh, wait, wait a minute. I gotta bring another V squared over here. Okay, let's bring the V squared over here. And what's left on the other side? Mass of the particle. Mass of the particle. How bizarre. So I know Q, I know V, I know, so mass of this particle is going to be equal to, let's just go through it here, Q, R, B, all over V. I could go even further and just simply say that V is also equal to the electric field and the magnetic field of the velocity selector. Now make sure you understand, this is this, this B here is the B in this part. This part, I might want to say there's a B1 and a B2, so I'm a little careful here. So in this case, this is B2, because if I wanted to replace my velocity, I could say, well, this is Q R B2 divided by my electric field. Let's, let's here, I'm gonna say in here was electric field one. So I'm gonna say electric field one divided by B1. So I got to be careful. That's not the same magnetic field. I've got, I've got two different magnetic fields, but I do know what each of them are, which means using this equation, I can get the mass of my particle. As long as I know the strengths of my magnetic field and my electric field that I use throughout my entire thing, I should be able to tell you after exactly what the mass of that particle is now it will take a little while to go through this and uh, probably you know maybe watch this video one or two times but uh, hopefully you can uh, follow exactly what we're talking about just remember the steps here okay we go from an accelerator that will speed up and the the particle in the first place by creating an electric field between two plates there's a little slit the particle moves through and then um, all these particles, by the way, all these particles, I should mention, tons and tons of particles, thousands and if not millions of particles come through into the velocity selector. And only the particles that have a very specific velocity will come through on the other side because they will keep going in a straight line. Why will they be going in a straight line? Because their velocity must be, <coughs> excuse me, the velocity must be the ratio of the electric field and the uh, magnetic field that you use in the velocity selector otherwise they will diverge their path and they will move and hit the sides of my velocity selector so now i know exactly my velocity i move into a mass separator which has another magnetic field which creates a circular path in this case i don't want it to go in a straight line i want it to go in a circular path and hit the wall that is able to detect where it hits and by knowing the distance from it, the entrance that it went, I can also tell the radius of that circle. And by using that radius of the circle, I can talk about how the force of the magnetic field is also a centripetal force. And by using that equation, uh, we can figure out a further equation to calculate the mass of the particle. And that's it. That's a mass spectrometer. Please remember that this is definitely something I will be asking you in the future, either in a test or even in the final exam. It is something that I expect you to know how to describe in the way I have, including just um, the different parts, but also the equations that you use to determine all the uh, things along the way. Okay, I hope that helped. Thank you. Talk to you later.